Welcome, welcome. Godric here, your stock market mentor. <clears throat> Gonna talk about some stocks tonight. Some stock market stocks. I got your back. Come one, come all. Welcome, welcome. Great school, appreciate you. XRP, I don't do crypto. I I am watching Bitcoin, 62,000. Botanical, welcome. Tucker Scott, welcome, appreciate you. Yelito, Yelito's a gifter. Yeah. Uh, Brian, welcome. Zentry, Dome. All right, tonight we're gonna look at some stocks. Uh, all time high on the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones hit uh, 42,000, what was it? I have it here. Forty-two thousand eight sixty-three plus four hundred. Hello, new all-time high in the Dow Jones. So, so I want to tell you guys, um, who do stocks uh, that you're making good money. You're not that smart. You're not that genius, because the market's just up. So don't take too much credit. Don't think you're all like all that. Don't think you're like the Wolf of Wall Street because you're making money. Because guess what? The whole market's up. So maybe you're just kind of riding the wave, which is cool. I mean, I'm not mad at you. But don't think it's it's something that's not. Uh, grab a hold of these good stocks, ride that wave, make some money. Uh, if you're trading and you sell at these peaks, you buy the dips. If you're a long-term investor, fine, just hold. If you're a dividend, dividend investor, uh, which is probably better because you get dividends, just hold. Welcome, you guys. Friday night, uh, October. Now it's going to October 11th, 2024. Three day weekend, Columbus Day, Monday. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about a couple of things tonight and then I'll take some questions. Put your questions in the chat. Uh, anybody who gives me um, a follow, I'll follow them back after the live. If anybody uh, is gifting, the gifters, throw me a crane up there. I appreciate you. And uh, for those who want to learn to retire into the stock market, you can throw me a sub. It's only five bucks a month. I teach you what I know. Uh, we can communicate. I can answer your questions and, and uh, mentor. That's what I do. Okay, uh, bro, last time I saw your live, you gave me a great call shout out for the video. JP's one stop. What's that, JP? Bro, that's what I'm here for, bro. That's just, you know, this is how I do. Glad you uh, made some money on that. Want to throw me a crane or whatever, you know. I'm going to scroll back and try to get your questions, but if I don't get them, just put them, put them in again. Appreciate you guys. Um, give me some likes. Hit that screen like a video game. Pat, 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 pat. Get those likes up. Help me get some people in here, you know, algorithms and stuff. And if you can, um, there's a few people in here. Just hit, just give me two shares. Two shares each. Hit the bottom right corner. Two shares each. Get some more people in here. Appreciate you. The likes get more people. Any tips on someone that was wants to start investing? Ed Delon. Ed, did you come to Godric for your first questions about investing? Oh man. Well, um, what I would do, okay, this is a healthy market, good economy. I would stick with the U.S. Uh, strictly Nasdaq and New York stocks. Uh, you know, Dow Jones, S and P five hundred stocks. Because why? Because these stocks, um, 
are stellar. They've proven themselves by going up and up. And they have, what, a big company that has a real product, that has real employees, that have a real service, that make money, that make profit. And those numbers go into the accounting, and then they go in the stock market, and the investors, they like those numbers, they buy their shares, their shares go up. Uh, appreciate the sub. Uh, for those who sub, you can DM me your questions. Uh, just just one question at a time, please. Um, so you're looking at um, investing in the top brass. Don't try to invest in a bright idea when you start out. Don't try to buy stuff that you think that you think is good. Invest in stuff that's already good, that's already working. It's a, these big profitable companies, because. Um, you're just going by what they say tried and true, you know. I have a few criteria I can show you uh, tonight. I can just run it by by real quick. Uh, volume, the stock you want to invest in has to have a heavy volume, two million, five million a day. More volume is good. Less volume is not good. That's one one check mark. Uh, another check mark is uh, market cap. You want to have around at least fifty billion market cap, ideally more. Ideally, the market cap is growing nicely. But if it's too small, if it's like the size, if you're investing in a company that's like the size, has a market cap of like the value of a house in Beverly Hills, that's where you're going to have a problem. Because the smallest economic downturn, those companies go bankrupt. So they got to be, you know, a certain size. My threshold is about $50 billion. Uh, that's... And then 10-year chart. Look at the 10-year chart on your stock. You want a stock that's had at least 5 to 10 years proven track record. And the chart should be going from the bottom left to the top right. Not so much like, but at least it's making money over 10 years. If you have a chart over 5 or 10 years that's going down, losing money, avoid that. That company's losing money. Investors are, are, are angry. Uh, it's going the wrong way. You want to have your chart going up. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's look at, um, let's say NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a big one. NVIDIA is golden right now. They have a big AI department. And they have a lot of revenue. People want the AI chips. And we'll just put NVDA. The stock is 134 a share. It was down 10 cents a day. No big deal, same difference. Uh, if you look at the five-year chart, for example, I have five years ago, it was $5. And now it's $135. So 27 times it went up. Do you see what's happening? I'm not saying all your stocks have to do this, but this one's going the right way, okay? Uh, it has the volume. It says volume 170. 170 million, which is way more than you need, but that one's probably the top king right now. Uh, oh, also, uh, you want PE. PE means profit. If there's a positive PE, that means it's making profit. If your PE is 63, which is kind of high traditionally, but it just means it's really hot, so it's highly priced, which is fine. PE, uh, a more fair PE is around 20 or 15, but that's kind of more boring at this point. You want something that's hot, 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 because those stocks that are hot could be trading at multiple multiples, which is to say they can really swing up. Um, there's some more quiet stocks, dividend stocks, for example, they're going to have PEF 10 or 12, which is fine, but probably it won't move too much. So I'd like, stocks like NVIDIA can move, has, has, has room to grow. Even though the market cap is three trillion, so it's already at the top of the top in market cap. This I think Nvidia is kind of like a Danny for the uh, Indian uh, family of financial investors from India. Like, like that Danny company is like too big to fail. They're in everything, you know. Nvidia is not in everything, but it, the market cap is 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 already fat and it's still going to grow. So. That's my analogy. Uh, what else did I say? 
Uh, it has the, the tenure chart going up. It has the volume and it has the PE. It has the, uh, what? Um, let's read it. NVIDIA Corporation provides graphics and computer networking solutions in the United States, Taiwan, China, Hong Kong, internationally. Oh, it's good that your stock is international, ideally. Because, you know, smaller companies, U.S., you know, are, they're hard to compete with international companies, right? Graphics segment offers GeForce, GPUs, for gaming and PC. And, and gaming is only getting more popular, right? Gaming, initially, uh, NVIDIA does gaming graphics cards, right? And now they're doing AI. Um, the GeForce Now game streaming service and related infrastructure and solutions for gaming platforms. Quadro and NVIDIA RTX GPUs for enterprise workstation graphics, virtual GPU and vGPU software for cloud-based cloud -based visual and virtual computing. Automotive platforms for information systems and Omniverse software for building and operating metaverse and 3D internet applications, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot more on that. You can look it up in the video. Um, so this is one example of a good company that's going, that's going places, probably go a lot higher. Uh, other companies I like, just off the top of my head, Starbucks, SBUX, you know about Starbucks, also international. Starbucks um, can get some market share, but also has a dividend. Starbucks dividend is 2.43% per year. Not a lot, but think of it like it's free money. Okay. Another stock I can think about, um, Apple. Apple's pretty good. Um, I think they're going to be growing this, this next year a little bit. Uh, actually, Apple will probably keep you more safe than anything. It's not like it's going to double or triple, but um, because they're the... The, the, the main game in cell phones, they're going to be, uh, it's going to be a certain amount of support for that, right? And the five year on Apple is 60, five years ago. Now it's 227. So like four times, it went up 400% in five years. Let's check. I'm sorry. I think Starbucks did not go up. I think Starbucks was the same price five years ago. Yeah, five years, ago, Star five years ago, Starbucks was 80, 80, and now it's 95, so it didn't, you know, triple or do multiples, but I would say maintain and it pays that dividend and uh, probably go a little higher by next year. So we start off, buy a few shares of, of well-endowed companies and then see where they go, Okay. Uh, the real real is most people are going to lose money when they start out because they're going to pick lemons and lemons go down. That's what generally happens. So I'm trying to get you on the right track. Um, once you get into trading shares, look at dividends to get dividend money consistently. And then look into, once you start doing that, covered calls, which is what I teach. The covered call trade, you can make money monthly, like income pay your bills, uh, monthly income on your, on your dividend, uh, well, monthly income on your covered call stocks, and uh, if you have enough of those covered calls, pay all your bills and retire in the stock market. Write that down. Uh, dividends, covered calls, and investing in stocks that are well endowed, that are proven, tried and true. My advice. Don't do options off the bat. Options are very more difficult. Questions. AMD is second best for NVIDIA as far as chip companies go. Uh, JP. Um, yeah, probably. Uh, let me pull up AMD for you. AMD is also a hot, hot to try out good one. Advanced market devices. $167 a share. Up $3.71 today. Um... Five-year chart shows an uh, AMD at 35 five years ago. Now it's 167. 
So four times, five times in five years, five, 500% return. Uh, advanced Micro Devices operates as a semiconductor worldwide company. It operates through data center client gaming and embedded segments. The company offers x86 microprocessors and graphics processing units, GPUs, just like uh, NVIDIA, as an accelerated processing unit, chipsets, data center, and professional GPUs and embedded processors, and semi-custom system on chip, SOC products, microprocessor and SOC development services and technology. So AMD is probably more specialized, which is fine. Um, they're nowhere near the size of NVIDIA. AMD market cap is 272 billion, okay? And their PE is 197, so the PE is much higher multiples than NVIDIA. So this is a little more like the new, newer kid in the block, smaller competition. Uh, they got the fire chart, they got the volume. AMD, 42 million, which is great. I love that volume. Has a fire chart, has a PE. Uh, what else? Um, let me add one more criteria right now. Um, actually, two. Uh, one is dividends. If they have a dividend, that's good. It's better than no dividend. Uh, it just means the company can pay out money to the investors. Um, and then the cover calls. If they can produce a cover call every month, which means you can write options. It has to have an option chain. Not all stocks have an option chain, but if it has an option chain, that's good because you can write a cover call. I know we can do cover calls both on NVIDIA and AMD, so that gets a check mark. Uh, no dividend for AMD. That's fine. The video has a tiny dividend. They both have good cover calls. So yeah, these are these are great companies. Take a look at uh, AMD and Nvidia, NVDA. Questions. Thanks for the live, guys. I mean, thanks for the likes. Appreciate you. Um, thanks for the shares. Whoever shared. I'm going to talk about a couple of strategies today. Um, my guy got to actually read your entire chat. Dude, I, I, I can't read everything all the time. But I'll try. I'm scrolling back right now looking for your questions right now. I'll, I'll miss some, but just, just bear with me. Just put them in again. Appreciate you guys. Keep those likes coming. I'm going to go by hour tonight. And uh, when I'm done, I'll post this. I post my lives um, on my profile. So there's like hour sessions up there. You can take a look. Wanna, don't want to miss anything. Just buy VOO, QQQ, and NVIDIA, Microsoft, and you'll be set for the rest of, of time, JP. Um... QQQs I like. If you guys want to do a diversification or diversify, look at QQQ. And what that is, that represents the top 100 NASDAQ stocks, mostly technology. Uh, stocks on the QQQ are like Netflix, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Meta. These are the top stocks. So top brass. Uh, five years ago, the QQQ was 192. Now it's four ninety two, so like almost between like two and a half times multiples, which is awesome. Um, four ninety two a share, okay. Picture the share here. At that price, sometimes people go to the options, but be careful about those options because they can inspire worthless. Beware. But the shares generally uh, is a good diversification. You probably make good money over time. I think we're going high right now. I think by next year, 2025, we're going to have new highs on all the top indices. And uh, the, the top companies will come in. Um, I can't say for sure about the smaller companies because it's going to be like... Uh, it's going to be like uh, the stronger ones are going to do better. 
So just keep in mind that when you invest in a company, like a no-name company, small volume, uh, you know, check how many employees they have, you know, new, a new idea, you know, you're, you're taking a risk because that company maybe is not established yet. That's why I'm telling you, you know, QQQ, AMD, Apple, NVIDIA, you know, Netflix, Starbucks. Microsoft is um, the all-time greatest returning stock, I believe. 3,500 fold, which means $1 invested in Microsoft way back in the day is worth $3,500 now or even more. And that's the all-time record. So, yeah, Microsoft. Um, I don't think it can grow like these other stocks, but kind of like kind like NVIDIA and Apple, um, it's, it's more safe. It's, con it's considered that it's going to be safer because everybody's in it. They have a lot of employees. They have a big product, big, big, a lot of service, a lot of revenue, international. Questions? Uh, one stop. Questions? Thank you guys, appreciate you. Um, History Maker, Bro, M3, welcome, Joey, welcome, Jason, Tarkin, welcome, Food Service, hey, Food Service, what's up? Crypto Cuban, welcome, Gifter, Kenneth, oh, welcome, hey, Kenneth, appreciate your sub. Uh, Kenneth, you have any questions? I can take care of those, uh, just put them in there. I always uh, kept my subs first. I want to talk tonight about um, Angeline. Welcome. I want to talk tonight about um, dividends and cover calls. And that's because um, these are what you call like bona fide strategies that perform, that make money. A lot of times in the stock market, um, people lose money because they're kind of gambling, you know. Um, I had a Quora question tonight. Let me pull it up. Quora app. I meant to take a picture of my Quora app so you guys can, can follow me on Quora. Q-U-O-R-A app. It's like a profession. It's like a Yahoo Answers or Reddit, but more professional. And there's a lot. I have a lot of uh, financial articles on Quora. And... The question tonight, which I just answered, I want to tell you about it. We talk about dividends and cover calls. Was what strategies can someone use to make a profit after losing their capital in the stock market? <laughs> and like, if I had a dollar for like every time someone told me they lost all their money, the stock market they took a big loss, you know. You just fill in the blank, you know? Uh, so the first thing you want to talk about is like a lot of novice investors will, will turn the stock market into like a casino. That's one thing, right? They kind of do some random trades. They lose money. They get hurt. And then they'll try to like get their money back, you know? Like, <laughs> like they're playing roulette, you know? And the, the problem is you can actually, you know, gamble in the stock market because if you don't really know what you're doing, you don't really have a, a rhyme or reason for this trading, these trades you're doing. If you don't really have a strategy, you don't really have a goal or a plan, then it is kind of like gambling and it is kind of very risky, dangerous. But if you're investing like in solid companies, you know, Apple, you know, uh, Amazon, you know, we talked about AMD, we talked about... Um, we talked about uh, NVIDIA, we talked about Starbucks, then, like, you're not going to really lose too much money. Even if the market kind of comes down, it'll only come down so much with these big companies, you know, because they're what? They're always going to have the, a product. They're always going to probably gonna make a profit. They're going to stay in business, right? So when you get hurt is when you're investing in companies that either don't have a really good business or they're losing business or they go out of business. 
And that's when you, you turn, generally lose a lot of money in the market. So uh, the first thing is when you lose money in stocks, whatever you did wrong, or whatever you did, you, can, you can't get that money back. That's the first thing I want to teach you guys. Like when you have a bad trade, the money is gone, okay? You don't want to look back. You want to look forward. You want to start fresh. You want to, want to reassess, reevaluate, start fresh. Don't worry about getting your money back. Just put that in the past and do a fresh trade that it has a, you have a good philosophy, you have a goal, you have a plan, and you invest in quality companies. That's what you do. So instead of trying to get money back and then risking losing more, just forget about that, what you did in the past. Start fresh and use wise, make wise decisions, use good strategies. And two strategies I want to talk about tonight, especially for you new investors, Dividends and cover calls. Questions. Thoughts on American Lithium Corporation. Do you, you have a, a symbol for me on that? Thoughts on holding J.P. Morgan. Um, I like Goldman Sachs uh, for the banks, but I'll put J.P. Morgan for you. I don't have it. J.P. Morgan, 222, up 9 today, 9.45. Uh, the five-year chart shows some growth. Five years ago, it was 129. Now, it's 222, so it's up 100 points. So, it didn't double, but pretty did pretty good. Get the green light. Has a volume, 18 million. Green light. Um, JP Working Chase. And company operates as a financial services company worldwide. It operates through four segments. Consumer, Community, Banking, CCB. Corporate and Investment Bank, CIB, Commercial Banking, CB, and Asset and Wealth Management, AWM, which is stocks. The CCB segment offers deposit investment and lending products, cash management and payments, and services mortgage organization and servicing activities. Residential mortgages and home equity loans Remember, banks can loan out nine times what they have on deposits. So it's like they get free money that way. So, and, and if, if these banks start failing, you know, the government's probably going to bail them out anyways. So you got that going for you. Um, JP Morgan will probably go up. Um, it's in a nice uptrend right now. Since 2023, January, hit a bottom. It's going up. But it'll probably go, you know, 230, 240. But it's more of a steady long term. Let me look at the six month. Okay, if you look at JP Morgan on the six month chart, um, if you trade, this could be a trading stock because you notice that it has dips, nice uh, deliberate dips and peaks. I'm looking here, they have big dips every couple of times a month. You can trade those. You can trade those patterns. But um, you know they have the volume. I'm sure they have the PE. PE is eleven, so very fairly, fairly valued. Um, market cap six twenty three billion. So I guess too big to fail. Uh, that's compared to Bank of America, which is three twenty six billion. Wells Fargo, which is two eight billion. Royal Bank of Canada, one seventy five billion. Let me pull up Goldman Sachs. Let's, let's compare. Let's see if I can beat JP Morgan. <clears throat> it's on, it's on. GS Goldman Sachs, five sixteen a share, up twelve today. Uh five years ago it was two sixteen. And now it's 516, so more than double. Ooh, sorry, JP Morgan. Uh, Goldman Sachs beat you on the five year. Volume, um, 2.4 million. So you beat me on the volume, but we still have enough volume. Uh, business summary Goldman Sachs a Group Incorporated, a financial institution, provides a range of financial services for corporations, financial institutions, governments, governments, and individual worldwide. 
It operates through global banking, markets, asset and wealth management, which is stocks and platform solution segments. The global banking and market segment provides financial advisory services, including strategic advisory assignments related to mergers and acquisitions, divestitures, corporate defense activities, restructurings, and spin-offs, and relationship lending, and acquisition financing. Uh, can I say more high-end? I'm just going to like, yeah, I don't know. I know, I mean, I think this is the gold, and then JP Morgan's probably silver. But let's look at the PE. Let's see. Uh, 16, so it's highly priced. Market cap, 163 billion, so smaller, okay? Bigger isn't always better. Um, they compare it to BlackRock, Morgan Stanley, so uh, I think both of these banks are going to be going up. Um, you can kind of you can kind of look at the five year chart, the ten year chart. You can compare them. You can look at uh, the dividend. You know, dividend for uh, Goldman Sachs is two point three eight percent dividend. So about just about about as much as uh, Starbucks. Let me look at J P Morgan. Uh, dividend for J P Morgan is two point three five. So so so. J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Starbucks have a very close, tight dividend. I have to give them credit for that. Green light there. Very nice and tight. They're almost like brothers. Brothers and sisters. Only Starbucks is a, is a product service company, and Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan do money, do banks. Very good companies. Can't say nothing bad. Questions? Yeah, uh, Ty, absolutely smashed today. Had to be fired three billion. Three billion, fine. Ah, oh, dude, is that all? Thinking about TD Bank got caught money laundering for the cartel. Ooh, TD. Should we look them up? TD. Uh, what's the symbol? TD Bank. Get the symbol right. You don't mean Toronto Dominion, do you? Appreciate you guys. You put your co uh, comments or put your questions in the chat. I think Pepsi's looking pretty bullish through. Uh, J. Kenny. Double oh four, Pepsi. I like Pepsi. Um, I like Pepsi a little bit better than Coke. P E P symbol. Pull it up. Uh, one seventy four today, up one eighty two. Volume four point seven million. Got the volume. Five year chart. Uh, five years ago it was one thirty three. Now it's one seventy four. So hadn't doubled, but it went up so nicely. Green light. Volume, uh, share price is good. Um, PE, let's look at PE. No, it has a PE. 25, nice. Market cap, 240 billion, nice. Green light, green light. Uh, and it looks like we're going up. You know what? Pepsi has a 3.13% dividend, higher dividend than the other stocks. So more likely to maintain price than go up. And this six-month chart kind of shows them steady going across. They just started peaking right now. A uh, stock like Pepsi, you probably won't make a lot of share growth. But what you'll have is you'll have support. You'll have a, a, a stable stock that's not so volatile, like low beta. Look into beta, low beta. And um, in the correction, it'll probably maintain because people don't keep drinking Pepsi. They don't keep drinking the, using their products. Let's take a look. Pepsi Company engages in the manufacture, marketing, distribution, and sale of various beverages and convenient foods worldwide. The company operates through seven segments. Frito-Lay, they own Frito-Lay America, North America, Quaker Foods, 
North America, PepsiCo Beverages, North America, Latin America, Europe, Africa, Middle East, and South Asia, and Asia Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, and China region has Pepsi. It provides dips, cheese flavored snacks, and spreads, as well as corn, potato, and tortilla chips, cereals, rice, pasta, mixes, syrups, granola bars, grits, oatmeal, rice cakes, and side dishes. Beverage concentrates, fountain, syrups, and finished goods, ready to drink tea, coffee, and juices, dairy products, and sparkling water makers and related products, as well as distributes alcoholic beverages under Hard Mountain Dew brand. The company offers its products primarily under the Lay's Doritos. Doritos? Hello. Everybody's had Doritos. So, Pepsi here is a good stock, you know, um, all around, because the products are worldwide, and uh, a lot of revenue, and they're, they're popular products, and um, likely to survive a market crash or an economic downturn. Probably be fine. People are going to eat all this stuff. Okay. Um, I think it'll kind of raise gradually. Uh, Pepsi, maybe, I'm not sure, it has an all-time, it has a high here of 180. I'm seeing, I'm looking at 180 over here, so probably it'll break that um, high, uh, maybe early next year with the, rest, with the rest of the market. But all in all, a good dividend stock. Pepsi, look into it, P-E-P. Opinion on T-Mobile stock. Um, I like T-Mobile. Um, I don't really like phone companies for in, in a general sense, but T-Mobile is the best one. T. Uh, what's the symbol for T-Mobile? Uh, I have I, T-Mobile. T-M. Okay, here we go. T-Mobile US uh, two twelve a share, up no two thirteen up one fifty nine today. Volume, 1.8 million, check mark. Fire chart, ooh, look at this. Five years ago, it was 160, 160. So it went up nicely. This is like a really nice, steady upward trend on the, on the, the chart. Hadn't doubled, but gained about what? Uh, 60 points, so I'm not gonna complain. Look at the PE. Uh, 26, so fairly valued. Market cap, 249 billion. Check mark, check mark. Uh, PE, check mark. Fire chart, check mark. Volume, check mark. Uh, let's take a look. Um, I want to say T-Mobile is the best because of what? Customer service. Because like AT&T and those other companies have really terrible customer service. They don't give a crap about their customers. Um, T-Mobile has a lot of... Um, customer service in Philippines, just so you know, like if you get T-Mobile and you call them, you're going to get some girl from the Philippines, very nice to you, very respectful, just, oh, sir, I'm so glad you called, let me help you with your account, you want to make, make a payment, this is your bill this month, these are your services, tax, they'll break your whole phone bill down for you, and very pleasant uh, Filipino helpers, and um, I'm very impressed with that customer service. T-Mobile U.S., together with its subsidiaries, provides mobile communications services in the U.S., U.S., Puerto Rico, and United States region islands. The company offers voice messaging and data services to customers in the postpaid, prepaid, and wholesale, and other services. It also provides wireless devices, including smartphones, wearables, tablets, home broadband routers and other mobile communication devices, as well as wireless devices and accessories. Financing through equipment installation plans. Financing. Um, we got a bunch of new Apple iPhones through T-Mobile and they don't like just charge you cash for them. You, they'll like put them on your phone bill. So they'll like finance them over a year or two years. So they have a lot of phones financed that way so and why pay from up front when you can let that money work for you like in the stock market and just pay monthly right so that that i did that with the, the t-mobile also 
high-speed internet services, and in addition, the company offers services, devices, and accessories under T-Mobile and Metro, the you know, Metro, by T-Mobile brands through its owned and operated retail stores. Yeah, they have a lot of retail stores. If you want to pay your bill, just go into a T-Mobile store. You can pay your bill if you want. Buy, like, you know, a little headphone or something. Uh, T-Mobile app and customer care channels and its websites. It also sells its devices to dealers and other third-party distributors to resell through independent third-party re retail outlets. Yeah, so I do like T-Mobile. Um, let me look at... The dividend has a dividend, one point six six percent, kind of a tiny dividend, but one point six six percent is better than nothing. And if your stocks going up over time, plus the dividend, you know, exponential growth, compound interest. Um. Now, in, in defense of all these stocks, like the whole market's up, right? So this is what I'm saying. It's not that you're so smart. And you're making money in your account. It's at the home market level. What you guys realize? Like, I'll be impressed if you guys can make money in a bear market, in a correction. Then I want you guys to come, come to my lab and tell me what you're doing. Because then we got to talk. And separate the men from the boys. You see what I'm saying? Appreciate you guys. Uh, I'm going to do a couple more questions. I'm going to can pay bill there too. Yeah. Then I'm going to talk more about uh, dividends. And cover costs. I agree. I've had T Mobile for years and it's never an issue. P.O. Joy. I agree. I've had T Mobile for years and never an issue. Agreed. Uh, T Mobile is like so cool and nice to me. I probably never want to change. Um, Costco is misleading. Bad returns past couple weeks and months. Um, leak sweep Costco. Uh, I haven't had a problem with Costco. Um, let me look at Costco. I'm probably gonna tell you good stuff about Costco. I'm not sure what your gripe is. Eight eighty eight. So price shares price are really up. Probably this one's gonna split, probably. Oh shit, did I hang on. T Mobile. Did I have the wrong chart for T Mobile? Did I tell you the right chart? Um, I'm sorry. T-Mobile symbol is T-M-U-S. And... Well, let me go back to Costco. Whoops. Sorry. I'll let me go back to Costco. Costco's been doing good, good too. C-O-S-T. Costco. 888, 889, down four today, no big. 1.5 million shares, so enough volume because the share price is so high. You guys like, when I say 2 million minimum volume, right? Because you want a lot of that volume, you want that liquid, you want all those traders and investors in that stock. That what, gonna buy it when it dips, you're gonna see the opportunity. That's gonna save your ass because you're gonna buy it when it gets lower. And the price would come right back up. That's what happens in a volume stock. And Costco being eight hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars, um, the volume's gonna be naturally lower. So one point five million is fine because it's eight hundred, nine hundred dollars. So five years ago, look at this Costco, two seventy. Five years ago, so now it's nine hundred, triple, triple, triple in five years, triple price, three hundred percent return, actually. 100, 200, 300, is that right? 300 percent. Um, PE 53, so it's highly priced. That's probably what you meant. It's probably you think it's more priced. 53 PE for Costco. I looked at Costco a while back. They have like 300,000 employees, so they're pretty damn big. They're international too. Market cap three, 394 billion. 53 PE, check mark, check mark, check mark on the five year. Check mark on share price. Check mark on volume. Let me read for you. 
Costco Wholesale Corporation, together with its subsidiaries, engages and operates a membership warehouse warehouses in the United States, Puerto Rico, Canada, Mexico, Japan, United Kingdom, Korea, Australia, Taiwan, China, Spain, France, Iceland, New Zealand, Sweden. Very well diversified internationally. Uh, company offers branded and private label. Let me just tell you, Kirkland brand products in a range of merchandise categories that offers merchandise such as sundries, dry groceries, uh, candies, coolers, freezers, deli, liquor, tobacco. Oh, you can buy liquor and tobacco there with a good price. Appliances, electronics, health, and beauty aids. Basically, you can get whatever you need at Costco. Um, I noticed you go in there, like, you had to fill the whole cart. Like, you can't get at a Costco for, like, less than, like, 500 bucks, you know, or 400 bucks. You get, like, the big, everything is big, you know. Quantity, you know. And then, you have, then they're, they're charging a yearly membership, right? I think it's, like, 65 bucks now. So they're making a killing. They have, like, everything... Employees are, are well-trained. Everything is organized. What they're doing, they're taking your membership, right? And they're, they're paying their buyers to go find shit in different places in the world to get products for cheaper, you know? Different countries, you know, Mexico, for example. Uh, and then if they can manufacture that item in the U.S. better, but if they can, they'll do it in Mexico, whatever. Bring it to Costco, and sell it for, for cheaper than the competitor. That's why they're doing great. Uh, I think they're going up. Let me look at the six, six month chart. Six month chart is good for trading. Uh, went from 728 to 888. High, the high was 890. So it's really close to the high. Wait, hang on. Uh, high is 913. So it's really close to the high. So probably they'll break the high pretty soon. I don't see a problem with Costco. I don't know what your, what your, what your gripe is. Again, you know, these top brass companies that are, what, tried and true are all going up. And they're going up with a big, with a big market that's going up. So we'll see when we get a little correction. Don't just, don't just run away. You know, just kind of hang in there, guys. I'll tell you what to do. What are the best stocks to buy that are low? Geo. What are the best stocks to buy that are low? Geo, let me help you out here, my friend. I'm going to give you some advice that you may have never heard before. Do not buy low price stocks. Low price stocks are shit. Okay? Uh, because low price stocks have not gone anywhere. If you have a fire, $5 stock or $10 stock, where has it gone? Nowhere. I'm telling you stocks that have doubled, tripled, times five in five years, and you want to get a low price stock, you want a high price stock, because high price stocks are better. And that, probably you haven't heard that much before. High price stocks are better, because what? Get a stock, like, let's look at Netflix, okay? Which is my favorite stock, by the way. Did I tell you? $722 a share. It's just broke an all-time high. Five years ago, it was... Wait for it, two seventy eight. So more than double, okay, in five years. You want you don't want a low price stock. You want a high price stock because high price stocks are more successful. They've made investors money by going up and up and up and up. Okay, Netflix has the volume two point three million, healthy share price, fire chart double, uh, more than double in value, green light, check mark, P E, forty five check mark. Market cap, three three ten billion check mark. Uh, Netflix also outseated Disney for the number one entertainment company. Out with the old, in with the new. What can I say? Uh, they have a real basic system of stream, stream to your living room. And uh, they don't have a dividend, so there's no dividend there, but they don't need one. Uh, they're ready for you. Netflix Incorporated provides entertainment services. It offers TV series, documentaries, feature films, and games. Oh, don't forget the games across various genres and languages. The company also provides members the ability to receive streaming content through a host of internet-connected devices, including TVs, 
digital video players to be set top boxes and mobile devices. It operates in approximately 190 countries. Hello. Very well uh, diversified internationally. Um, so, uh, new guy, uh, you come to me for advice. I'd rather buy one share of Netflix than 700 shares of that dog shit penny stock you're looking at. That's going nowhere. It has no PE, has no employees, has no product, has no volume, has no fire chart, ha- has uh, uh, no tried and true. No, uh, this has no record of, 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 of success. Okay? So that's what you want to do. Don't, don't buy shares that are cheap. And, but since you asked... Okay, I will hook you up, okay? Pull up Palantir, P-L-T-R. Palantir is the cheapest stock I want you to buy. One of them. $43, down, down 10 cents today. Down one cent today, if I'm reading that right. Volume 66 million, check mark. Fire chart, oh look, five years ago, well, it's showing ten dollars, but it went all the way up to uh, to thirty five dollars early on. They went down to about seven dollars in twenty twenty three after the COVID. Now it's back up to all time highs. So it does have a fire chart after all, but it's kind of like a a mountain and a valley. So all in all, it's okay. It gets the green light. Volume fire chart. P.E. Does it have P.E.? I'm showing P.E. of 255 Very highly vol- uh, priced, but has, it means it's profitable. Market cap, $97 billion, so small, but not too small. Uh, no dividend, tell you that much. Um, this is the cheapest stock I want you to buy. Okay, it's probably that. It's probably. I mean, it's not you know Netflix. It's not Apple. It's not Nvidia. But it's uh it's forty three bucks. So what are you gonna do? Palantir Technologies Incorporated builds and deploys software platforms for the intelligence community to assist in counterterrorism investigations and operates in the United States, United Kingdom, and internationally. The company provides Palantir Gotham, a software platform which enables users to identify patterns in hidden deep within data sheets ranging from signals intelligence sources to reports for confidential informants Mm. spy versus spy stuff james bond stuff okay so they rely on government contracts can't just go out and buy them like you can buy starbucks but it's like they have some revenue they have a pe they make money at least recently they're showing that so let me just get into the cover calls here okay so for you new guys that are learning, uh, look into cover calls because they're a way to you can make money monthly on your stocks. And we're going to use pounds here for the first cover call. So buy the shares here at $4,328, $4,300, 4K investment, okay? Close enough. You click on option chain. Not all stocks have option chains, but most do. Go all and then we're gonna go one month out, so it's the 11th, it's the 12th technically, but same difference. We're gonna go to November 15th, okay? So that's a month and three days. We're gonna agree to sell the stock for a higher price. We're technically renting our option, we have the shares, we create the option, we rent the option by writing a cover call to the option buyers. You just basically put sell one call and Stocks have like a hundred or, or a thousand options. But I'm going to tell you the exact one that's going to make you the money. So listen up. Okay. Go one month out from where you are. In this case, November 15th. The stock is 43.28. So we're going to sell the 45. Yeah, 45. Call. So I have a hundred shares. You sell one call. 20 shares. You sell two calls. Uh, it's, it's paying 281. Okay. Which means they're they want me to do a puzzle. They don't think you guys are are awake.
Okay, back to you. Um, so you're going to get $2.81 per share every month. And it's $281 per 100 shares. That's one cover call, one contract. Let's do the math, okay? Work with me on this math. 2.81, which is your premium you get every month, divided by your share price of 43.28, which is the share price today, by 100 shares, equals 6.49% return. Pounds here, PLTR. 6.49% return for one month per month. Cover call. I'm going to put 45 November 15th. So you're agreeing to sell it for $45. Who wouldn't, buy, who wouldn't want to buy shares at 43 28 And agree to sell for 45 which means you'll make more money if it goes up. And for that, get 281 per share or $281 per contract. 281 per month. So what can $281 do for you? Hmm. Pay my gas. Pay some Starbucks, Netflix streams, some food. And it's going to give you 6.49% return. And if you can do 10, I always say, do 10 cover calls a year. Okay? That's going to bring you to 64.9% return. 65% return for the year, close enough. By year two, you've doubled your money. Do you, do you see this financial plan? It has a light bulb turned on in your head yet? Because some of you guys, when you retire, you're going to be working at McDonald's, taking orders, or checking receipts at Walmart. I'm not saying that's a bad job. Because, you know, people do that. But, like, if you see this money here with these cover calls, you might want to re-evaluate. might want to get your journal, write these down, because... I'm teaching you the real, real questions. Thank you for liking the live. Uh, you guys, give me some. Let's get those likes to two k. I appreciate you, the people in here. Give me two shares each. Uh, if you if you do gifts, throw me a crane. I love cranes. And if you want to learn how to retire in stock market, throw me a sub, and I can answer all your questions, and I can do one on ones with you. Um, appreciate you guys. Thank you for coming in. Um, Farrak, welcome. P.O. Joy, welcome. Thanks, thanks, thank you for the likes. Okay, so with four hundred, with four thousand three hundred dollars, by a hundred shares of pellets here, PLTR, right? The cover call every month gets six point four percent or two hundred eighty one dollars. That's your business every month to month to month, and you're going to be getting like twenty eight hundred dollars a year, which is like half your money back, more than half your money back by year two. You double your money. And you, you enter what's called the cash cow. Write this down. Cash cow. Because what? Because by year two, you have you have 20 cover calls or 24 cover calls. And you've got all your money back plus and you're just keeping making more money. If you look at it like this, if you're going to get back 6% per month and you're doing it for two years, you're going you're gonna to pass 100% return. And at that point, if you have all your income in one pile and your investment in another pile, your investment, your stock could go down to zero and you'll still have made money. You won't lose. So the point of a cash cow position is where you get to a point where you really can't lose. Luckily for me, I have a cash cow in Tesla, 28 cover calls. And when stock did today, it was kind of like, I was kind of, you know, whatever, but because of all these cover calls I'm getting, it's not really affecting me. Because it's just more money every month. So, look at the cover call. Look at the pounds here. Um, it's, a, it's the cheapest stock I want you to buy, probably. Uh, though I have a dividend stock that's cheaper, but dividends don't count. Because dividends are different than other stocks. But, that's what I got for pounds here. Write that down. Um, great return on that on the cover call. Questions? Yeah, I'm going to try this some time courses that are free. Uh, Raph, if you want to message me, I can answer your questions. If you want to date trading, leave for a minimum eight months before you start. I'm reading your questions. You really just make your statements. 
that's on chart guys i think it's day trading through it really don't know if that's good raf um day trading right i was talking about um cora q u o r a um on cora um i'm under eric rodriguez 137 is my profile i answer a lot of financial questions and the question today was like how do you recover from losing money um you said day trading be careful because like Day trading is very difficult and risky, okay? Most people lose money. What I'm showing you is how to do bona fide strategic trades that actually are doable and that produce profits, i.e. cover calls. You don't have to, it doesn't rely on chance. You're literally taking your shares and you're agreeing to sell. You're basically giving away some of the upside, just some of it. And you're getting paid every month. You're agreeing to sell your shares for higher. And if it does pass that point, in this case, if it does pass 45, your shares will sell. They'll cash you out at 45. Meaning you'll get the premium, plus you'll get more money for your shares going up. And then you can always buy back the stock and do, do more cover calls or go into another stock. But after it passes 45, in this case, the option buyer will take those shares because... Your option has made a profit, and um, then you start fresh. You get the cash, you start over. So it's like a win-win. Uh, also, I want to talk about dividends. Uh, dividends are good because, again, it's a bona fide strategy that makes money. It doesn't rely on chance. Like, these stocks can all go down. That's fine. So you can lose money on your value. But the cover calls will still come in every month. The dividends will still come in every three months. So that part is pretty much, uh, I don't want to say guaranteed, but it's set, right? It's a system that works. So I'm showing you how to lessen your risk. You don't have to day trade, you know, because you got cover calls and dividends. These are uh, proven systems at work. See my point? Appreciate you guys. Uh, throw some questions down here. If I miss your question, just put it again for me. I can only wrap back so so far. Reddit, Raf, uh, Reddit. I don't follow Reddit, um, but I can look at the stock. You want Reddit? I can look at the stock. It has the stock? Uh, Raf, you're saying a lot, but not really asking questions. Appreciate you guys looking for questions. Why is Visa going up? PO. Visa's going up with the whole market, man. Let me look at let me look at Visa for you. Okay. Alright. V I S A. Visa's on the Dow Jones, first of all. Did, did I, I put the I put the wrong thing. Hang on a second. V I S A. Oh, I'm sorry. V, symbol V, screwed up, okay? 277 a share, uh, up 37 cents today, so the pr healthy pr share price. Five years ago, the stock was 176, so it went up $100. So it didn't double, but it did pretty damn good. Check mark. Volume, uh, 4.7 million, check mark. PE, uh, 32, pretty good, check mark. Market cap. 549 billion check mark check mark check mark check mark dividend uh i don't see a dividend none double check that i don't see a dividend um you guys know what visa is right visa incorporated operates as a payments technology company in the united states and internationally the company operates visa net a transaction processing network that enables authorization clearing and settlement of payment transactions it also offers credit, debit, and prepaid card products, tap to pay, tokenization, and click to pay services. Visa Direct, a solution that facil facilitates the delivery of funds to eligible cards, deposit accounts, and digital wallets. Visa B2B Connect, 
a multilateral business to business cross border payments network visa cross border solution blah, blah, blah. basically uh when you go buy something on your card on your visa the merchant who sells you the stuff, they get charged like 1% or 2% or half a percent. Every $100, you give it a hundred, you give it like a dollar to Visa. So that's just, they just get easy money. So they're gonna keep going up uh, with the market, probably go to 300 by next year. If you look at the competitors for Visa, MasterCard, Berkshire Hathaway, oh, that's weird. Uh, also, what, American Express. These are all, you know, well-known, profitable companies. Questions. Can you check Celsius for us? P.O. Joe, I need a symbol. Give me a symbol. Hook me up. Sorry for the basic questions. I'm new to this. I tried it last year, but I lost since I was... I was clueless. A uh, raft. Um, you will lose if you don't know what you're doing. I'm, t I'm telling you, like, 30 years of experience. I'm trying to, like, guide you to start. Don't buy low price stocks. Don't buy penny stocks. Don't day trade. Don't buy options. Buy shares of well-qualified companies that are doing great. And that's real business. That's not gambling. That's buying uh, proper investments that have... Uh, Profits and that are successful. That's a big difference. I like, don't just buy stuff you saw on TV or stuff like something your father in law recommended or something Kramer recommended. Buy these companies that you know are either they're, they're the top game of their game, like, like Apple would be the top for cell phones, T Mobile is good enough for cell phone service. Starbucks is good for coffee, example. It says Netflix is good for stream. Tesla for EVs. Okay. Questions. Uh, a to this. Objectively, long-term options is better than shares. I have contracts expiring January next year. A to this. Bro, thank you for uh, the advice on long-term options. Um, I haven't even taught that uh, yet, not recently anyways. Um, what Atavis is saying is you can get, buy an option like three years out or two and a half years out. Like, for example, but by the way, you want to buy the options on the best companies, Don't not those crappy stocks, okay? Like, if you want to go, like, let's say NVIDIA, okay? This is NVIDIA, NVDA. Now, we're going to go options. Now, instead of going next month, because we're not going to do cover calls on this one right now, we're going to go out maximum, okay? Maximum the video is January 2027. One, two, two, more than two years. Uh, no, three years, four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-five. 25, just over two years. So if you bought a call, let's say we go at the money. I'm just giving you an example, okay? 134 at the money. 135 is $45, okay, for 135. Which at the money, which means you'll pay $4,500, okay, for a call option on the video for two and a half years out, okay? Now, um, you can also buy 100 shares in NVIDIA for 13000 Or you can buy a call option, a leap, for 4500 So technically, with a call option, you control 100 shares. So same idea. But you're, sp you're paying less money, right? So the re if NVIDIA does well, the return's better, okay? Because the with the option, you, you have leverage, right? Um, so yeah, so long-term calls are a way to... I always say options are, you invest less money, but more risk rewards. And when I say that is that as long as your stock's going to go up, this option is going to um, give you a better return than the shares because it's leveraged, right? 
Um, but if the shares go down, for example, this is where you got to be careful. Um, you still have more risk because for whatever reason, in two or three years, if your shares go down, that option starts losing value and lose value faster than the shares. Like if an option, if a stock loses, let's say 50%, right? So NVIDIA goes from 135 to 66. So technically you lost half your money in the shares. That could happen, let's say in a crash or the, the company gets slammed for some reason, you know. Um, probably not, but in theory it could happen. This call option will get decimated. That's the problem. So uh, options are great as long as the company's making money, you know, uh, and you're getting, you know, you're going to get good profits more than the shares. But if the shares, if the company's not doing great, if the market's not doing good, you're probably going to want to look at puts instead of calls because your calls are going to get diminished faster than the shares. That's my, that's my take on it. So thank you, though, eight of us for that info. Based on questions. Raph, high risk doesn't scare me. Raph, you scare me, my friend. You're like the next Wolf of Wall Street, is that what you're trying to say? I give you an example. I have a Dollar Tree puts expiring January tr Dollar Tree. <laughs> Holy fuck, bro. Dollar Tree is going right out of business. So, I mean, yeah, you probably make money in those puts. January 25. Atibus puts. Honestly, I've been saving money, a bunch of money set aside for this, never got started. Also, you guys, I want to tell you, like, when you're doing stock market, um, it's not a situation where you put 5000 or 10000 in there, and then you trade your account to a million dollars. That doesn't work that way, okay? What you're doing with any investment, you're building up over time. You're putting consistent deposits in your account monthly, weekly, whenever you get paid, whenever you get money, tax returns, etc. You sell a property, whatever. You have to support your account with consistent deposits. If you don't do that, you're not really in business. And if some of your stocks go down, for example, you'll just have a, 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 a loss in your investments and no money coming in. So uh, proper money management, proper uh, stock management, you're always putting money in there whenever you get money. You're supporting your account. And ideally, you're getting good stocks that are going up over time. Your, 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 your trades are coming in. Your strategies are doing well for you. Dividends, cover calls, long-term trades, long-term investments. And then you can have a 5000 10000 turn to a million because you're, you're adding money over time and you're getting dividends, you're doing trading, and you're doing cover calls, for example, and you're making money in what successful stocks and that's why um, you can have that exponential return. But it's not going to happen just with one deposit. You have to keep bringing that money in. That's just how it works. Questions? So um, I'm going to start wrapping up. I want to uh, just remind you, we talked about pounds here. It has a great cover call. We talked about, I, I want to touch base on dividends, okay? Um, let's use um, MO. Okay, which is Altria. Altria uh, is fifty dollars a share, forty nine eighty four today, up sixteen cents. Dividend payment. Let me tell you the dividend. Watch this. And like this, eight point two one percent dividend. Okay, a year, eight point two one. Mo symbol. Uh, Altria. Look at the rest of it. It's a fifty dollars stock. Five years ago, it was forty five dollars. So it gained five dollars. But look, the dividend payment is really high percentage wise. So it just has to maintain share price. It doesn't have to really go up that much. Volume four point five million. Four point five million a day. Check. P E. Eight point five seven. Very fairly valued. Check. Market cap. 85 billion, check. Dividend, check. Um, Archer Group Incorporated through its subsidiaries, manufacturers, and sells smokable and oral tobacco products in the United States. 
The company offers cigarette primarily under the Marlboro brand, large cigars, pipe tobacco, under Black and Mild brand, moist, smokeless tobacco, and sinus, sinus products under Copenhagen, Skoll, Red Seal, and Husky brands, oral nicotine products under oral nicotine pouches under the oral brands, and e-vape cigarette products. Enjoy Ace brand. It sells its products to distributors as well as large retail. So it has a market share on that, um, based in Richmond, Virginia. This one um, is the United States. And that they did that for a reason. Um, the other company, the brother company, of um, Phil Morris, is PM. That one's international. Same idea. But this one has a better dividend. So MO, write this down MO, 8.21 dividend. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain something to you guys, real real basic, especially, especially for the new, 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 newcomers, the new investors. I'm showing you cover calls on one hand, which may pay every month. And I'm going to show you dividends, which pay every three months. And the value is that there's very low risk. The, 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 pro, the, the strategies make money by themselves. Okay? On the dividend side, I always say, like, you buy the shares, MO, 50 bucks a share, for example, and on dividend day, they're going to pay you a dividend. In this case, 8%. Not a lot, but think of it this way. You don't have to trade. You don't have to worry about stock market corrections. You don't have to worry about um, uh, swings or economy. What investors, what, what, st- what dividend investors do usually when the market, when the market dips, when the stock dips, what? They buy more. Because why? Because if you're getting paid 8% at $50 a share, if that, dips, if that stock dips to 45 or 40, which it may, that dividend is going to be like 9%, 9.5%. Because what? The dividend doesn't go by percentage. The dividend goes by a dollar amount. So, so the dollar amount is going to be a higher percentage when the stock comes down. When the stock goes up, it'll be a lower percentage. So if you want to trade, trade the peaks by the dips. But all in all, the dividend is going to, going to get you uh, uh, free money, basically. Um, every, every three quarters, every three months, every quarter, which is three months. And in, in, in the case of MO, it's one of the highest paying one of the most successful dividends of all time, paying 8.21% right now, $50 a share. And I like to say, like, fall out of bed and get the dividend. You don't have to do nothing. Now, except own the shares. Now, um, I have 100K, okay. 8.21% is giving you $8,210 a year, okay. I have a million dollars invested. The dividend is paying $82,100 a year. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but here's the thing. A lot of old people increase dividends because when they retire, they live off that dividend. They pay their bills, they can live, they can supplement their Social Security, they can supplement their pension. Because whether you're getting, you know, 80, I mean, 80K is a good amount, but even if you get 5% dividend, that's 50K of a million. And most people have a million by the time they retire. Most people, or more. So the value of a dividend stock is that you're getting dividend money, okay? If you had like Microsoft and, and Amazon and Google and these stocks that have a, either a very tiny dividend or no dividend, like Palantir has no dividend, or other stocks like Meta that have a tiny dividend or no dividend, and you retire, you can't pay your bills. You have to sell shares to pay your bills. So the dividend works much better because they're giving you money, dividend money. Your share, your shares stay intact. 100% different than just having long-term investments that you have to end up selling to pay for stuff. So again, dividends are an easy system, workable system that's always going to work as long as a company uh, keeps the dividend going. Um, look into if your company has consistent dividends. That's important. MO has very consistent dividends. And not only have they not slashed your dividend, 
but the dividend goes up every year to match inflation. So Biden and Harris eat your heart out. They're paying more to match inflation. Not less. Okay. So, MO, dividend stock. And Starbucks, we mentioned Starbucks, SBUX. Pays less, but probably you'll get more share growth on Starbucks. Uh, Pounds here, good cover call stock. $43 a share. Gives 6.49% return, or $281 per contract, per 100 shares. That's your business, to write the clear call every month. Pay your bills. What can $281 pay? Pay for your gas, pay for some food. And what, if you can pay enough bills? Retire in the stock market. There's a boat in the Caymans. Meet me there. Got to figure out. 